Jai Hind, and uh, today we have with us Captain Prabhunath. Captain Prabhunath is an AVP with G4S Securities. He has been an infantry officer, and today we have invited him to discuss the, the landscape of corporate security, corporate protection, workplace security, business continuity, broad function as to how this particular function adds value to the businesses, as to how this function is with passage of time becoming a very, very vital function of the, the corporate landscape so that uh, the businesses function without disruptions, without any kind of a, a break in, in uh, the operations. And, and we would be focusing this discussion on these particular aspects. We'll be covering it in two parts. So welcome to the talk today, Captain Prabhupada. Thank you so much. It was always a pleasure to be part of your Know, value network and, and you're doing so much for the fraternity that's up to you thank you so much it's all cooperation with brother officers so my first question would be uh, can you provide us a very broad overview of how the day-to-day -day operations or rather to say what all tasks the corporate security teams and professionals do for businesses on a daily basis uh, so I'll, I'll start with I mean, just to make it easy, let me start with the manufacturing side, then I can come to the topic side of it. So, in for example, if there's a manufacturing unit based out of Hadira, and uh, there's a, for example, a Reliance plant. So, the first role every day in the morning security provides is it regulates the entry of the employees, the workforce, I mean, the vendor workforce, and then it also regulates the entry of the vehicle, the material, so that everything goes into the uh, site and the production can start or it can continue from the production. So this is one daily task wherein security has a primary role. If we you know, go slightly you know, behind the scene in manufacturing setup, even the employees stay closer to the industry in their own towns. So even regulating the entry, it's like managing an army canton. So everything from entry to exit, to seeing that the employees are safe in their township is all the responsibility of security. That's the backside of it. Coming on to the, the major act, area where action happens, the industry has. So once the labor and all has entered, and it happens over the shifts, right? And the numbers are huge. In some cases, it could be 10,000 per ship. So imagine regulating the entry of 10,000 people and you have to do it ASAP. You cannot take endless hours to make these people enter because if they are delayed, the whole production line is there. So this is one of the most important functions in terms of day-to-day -day operation. And of course, the whole industry or that manufacturing unit is surrounded. Either it could be a boundary wall, it could be a concrete brick or whatever, or it could have just spent. So ensuring that no one enters your perimeter unauthorized. Firstly, you are regulating the entry of the authorized people, managing it so that it's smooth. You are recording the log of every entry because if tomorrow there's something goes wrong and you have not recorded the entry of every person, then we don't know at that particular moment where was that person. For example, something goes wrong and you want to see where that person was, whether he was inside the company or in the outside. So the logs which are maintained by the security industry, entry exit, they play a wide role. So entry regulation is one, the perimeter function uh, protection is second. Then within the industry also, they regulate the traffic and also that there is no workplace incident or accident. So that is one. They scan the baggages and also that there is no pilferage, entry and exit of you know, unauthorized material. So primarily, these are uh, some of the things which keeps the security function busy every day. How are uh, the corporate security teams structured in terms of hierarchy, positions, people? So what's a typical, I mean, an example kind of a thing? I'm not saying it's, it would be true for all, but, but a general structure. So uh, because generally a security function of any company, uh, no, generally has um, a combination of people who are on road of the company and people who are from the vendor side but helping the masters or the client. 
So for example, the CSO would be uh, on the company role and he will have his own team of 30 product managers. And the balance, for example, if the total team is 200, then the balance 150 would be uh, the manpower provided by the guarding agent. So guarding agency will have a set of people in terms of the guard, supervisor, uh, then ASO, SO. Up to that level, they, in some places, their assignment managers also that the team will take. So this element of 100, 150, depending on the size, will be the outsourced manpower who's helping the security function of the company work. And above this will be the supervisory or managerial lead level, which will be on the company role. So it could start from security officer, senior security officer, assistant manager, manager, senior manager, AGM, GM, and maybe the uh, CSO. So generally, and in some places, and depending on the size of the company, this hierarchy may be slightly more straight, or it could be you know, compressed, uh, depending on the total strength of the security function. Okay. So in addition uh, to that, there could be some, some element of sorry, some element of canine in some places, QRTs as an element. In some companies, fire and security are gloved, in some functions it is separated, in some companies, security and administration is gloved, in some companies it is separate, but generally this is out for the in the manufacturing setup. Okay. And and what about the corporate uh, non-manufacturing the service side? Yeah, in, in the corporate side, the people on the company roles are very less 53, 4, 5, 10. Generally, I mean, uh, what I've seen, and the number on the outside the outsourced elements are huge. But the outsourced element, the guarding portion of the outsourced element is less, but in between the mid managerial level is also outsourced. So the top layer, which belongs to the client, gets narrowed down in the corporate sector. And the vendor side element gets stretched, but it's we can differentiate between that there are three layers: a blue collar of the vendor, a white collar of the vendor, and white collar of the client. Whereas in manufacturing, it is white and blue. So generally, that's the okay. And uh, so, typically, uh, what kind of ranks and and positions or designations are uh, awarded to security professionals? What we generally hear. When you say white collared or say uh, the top hierarchies is uh, CSO, but I think CSO is a very misnomer kind of a term. It's more of an appointment rather than a, a designation. Sure. So in, in CSO is more of a manufacturing terminology, I'll say. In the corporate side of it, it is um, generally called as country security head, right? Or uh, regional security manager if you're handling. Uh, no, beyond India, for example, if it's anti Sri Lanka uh, and Bangladesh and, and few other countries in Asia. So it could be regional manager South Asia or a re a regional manager Asia Pacific if he, he is having few countries of the MENA. So that's how it is. But generally, they are called as uh, you know, country managers, right? And and it may, he may not be called as senior manager so, or, or CSO. It will be called country manager, regional manager. Cluster manager, these kind of terminology. So the multinationals are using. What kind of an interdepartmental uh, coordination does a security team does with, say, IT, legal, HR, business support services, admin, etc. How do they form the 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 support mechanism for uh, operations to carry on? In fact, that's the most um, challenging and most important role of any security professional. The collaboration with very stakeholders within the same uh, organization. So whether if we have to do anything with workplace related issues, like if I want an extra desk for my team member, then I'll have to go and interact with the services. If I want you know, some some electrical connection to one of my cameras and all that, again, I'll have to go and meet with the facilities to elect Elect have a, or, or electricity and water and everything comes under the admin or, or the facility stream. So everything which security needs in terms of support uh, in terms of administration and infrastructure, we have to collaborate with the facilities team. Somewhere it's called admin, somewhere it's called facilities, right? So that is one. HR is entirely a different function. So 
the professionals who are on the client side have to interact with the hr in terms if they have to uh, know hire a new position or create a new position then they'll have to interact with the, uh, their own hr team and also the hr side of the corporate has an element which takes care of the vendor workforce which work on their client like a significant element of the vendor or the security service provider will work out of the client workspace so when they work from the client workspace there are a lot of regulations and policies which they which the client has to comply with in line with the law of the land and their own internal protocols which is global in nature so a very vital part of hr is managing the vendor workforce and it could and they have multiple vendors so that's also a great area that the security professional on the client side have to be in touch with hr the legal has a big role any violations any issues which has some compliance component they have to be in touch with the um, legal department of your company and also if the company gets some legal notice notices and and direction that also flows to the legal through security because legal legal department doesn't have too much manpower they are not front facing so the security is the front facing element of legal also in most of the corporate so and then their procurement of course if you have to float any of the security tender you have to deal with your procurement team right because you will give your requirement specification but the interaction with the vendor will be done by the procurement or commercials team because the client side of the security also cannot do commercial negotiation with the vendor so that's how the interaction between security and the procurement comes then the business side of course because ultimately they are the ones we all are supporting whether it is hr whether it is security legal we are actually serving the business need of the organization so those are the key stakeholders whom we all are serving in a way so that interaction is very very vital and with business element comes the i mean there's enough i mean everybody is interlinked so unless we have the ability to work with many masters or many stakeholders it becomes very difficult to survive well okay now you mentioned that you know and and from what i could gather in any of the security roles whether it is manufacturing or the service industry etc the need for guarding the assets perimeter guarding ingress egress of uh, employees vendors policies and and, and you know now this comes across as something which is quite uh, protection oriented quite uh, security oriented now how would you say as a senior professional from the industry to kind of create a balance between protection security and a an open and productive welcoming workplace absolutely well that's the greatest challenge for any security professional and unless we have that understanding that ultimately the corporates are not fortress these are not forts which we have to guard against external enemy so as a security professional the first thing we should throw out of the window or door is our fortress mindset we cannot make our working places seems as forts like the way banks used to have those iron gates and all they are so unwelcoming and no knowledge worker or no respectful worker will enter your premises if you start bothering him with these checks so this is the i mean most challenging as well as very innovating and satisfying that you have to make the employees feel so secure without having i uh, know feel them that they are surrounded by a lot of people and everybody is watching them the knowledge worker of these days won't be productive if we make them feel washed 24 by 7 so and for that the only way is that we protect our perimeters the first layer should be so strong that once our employees are in thereafter they feel so safe maybe is as safe as their home that they only focus on work and they're not bothered about what is happening around them in terms of security that's a challenge which a security professional faces every day and has to evolve to make it uh, no more welcoming for the workers to come and work okay my last question for uh, the part one you yourself are a senior security professional now working with one of the best known brands and also providing uh, 
uh, asset protection to one of the global brands. I am sure you are interacting with a lot of senior corporate functionaries and, and uh, there are a lot of policy level uh, discussions also. How do you, and I don't want you to get into any specifics, but broadly, how would you say the security team contributes to the company's success beyond the uh, traditional security measures in terms of policy or perception or mindset? How does the security team becomes a part of the uh, overall business uh, landscape? Uh, Vipul, um, you know, security was always important, but in last few years, the importance of security has grown many fold. I, I mean, nothing, the credit doesn't go to any one particular person or event, but the multiple events which have happened around us, it may be COVID, it may be the wards around us. I mean, it's very unpleasant things to have around, but that's the reality is what we cannot close our eyes to, right? So, and the geopolitical situation and COVID combination, in a way, gave an opportunity to security to go beyond the traditional roles we have been playing uh, so far. For example, in COVID, when everybody started working from home, gradually then it became a mass moment. When companies had not planned that how do we transfer the assets to people so that they can work. For example, laptops. Your employee is not functional unless you give him a laptop connection. So delivering these assets in a closed environment when everywhere there is a lockdown, shutdown, we can't move. Security rose up to the occasion and did a wonderful job in terms of you know, ensuring that these assets landed to the uh, right team members. And this was never a security role. Logistic and transportation was never a security. But it went beyond traditional role. And this is the way business could survive and later on you know, thrive as well. So that's how you know, these were accidental and created opportunity created out of a calamity but otherwise also security you know, bosses and security teams are going beyond the traditional roles in being very very you know forward thinking forward looking very proactive very very collaborative to break that old image of you no know, uh, bodyguards around or gatekeepers and we have very smart uh, um, senior professionals who are um, breaking the old ceilings in terms of what security can do and I think we all have to just follow them and help them keep breaking those seals. Thank you, Prabhunath. I still have more questions, but I'll come back to you for uh, part two for that. And, and uh, thank you for your uh, time and, and the relevant information. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Lord Vipul. Thanks. Thank you, sir.